children, and welcome to our final episode on the fruit of the Spirit. We have shared about the fruit of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians 5.22. Thank you for sharing with us your beautiful artwork on Padlet. Your drawings and colouring were so inspiring. Some of you wrote your own prayer to Jesus and drew how you practice gentleness and self-control. I love them all. Well done, kids. You must be walking closely with Jesus this week. So let's sing this song to praise and thank our great big God for being there for us. Our God is a great big God. Hi children, today we're going to share with you another three fruit of the Spirit. The first is generosity. We are generous when we give ourselves willingly and cheerfully for the good of others. We can be generous with our time by spending it with someone who is sad or playing with them. We can be generous with our food or things by sharing with those who have less than us or the poor. Now let's ask Jesus to give us a heart of generosity by praying this prayer. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost. To fight and not to hate the ones. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labour and not to ask for reward. Save that of knowing that I do your holy will. Amen. Children, no matter what you are giving or sharing, when you are generous, you are giving others Jesus because you are loving them like how Jesus would. So, be glad when you can be generous. As 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 says, God loves a cheerful giver. So let's sing this song with joy and cheer in our hearts to remember God's word. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves 
lost a cheerful giver. How was your day in school? Good. Okay. Wow. Are you that hungry? Yeah, I'm starving. Mm. I forgot to bring the snacks that you packed for me for snack break. Oh, right. And I just couldn't wait for school to end. So I bought these snacks. Oh, that's quite a lot of snacks though. Might just spoil your lunch appetite, you know. And remember we have to take good care of ourselves and not eat unhealthy food. Sorry, Mom. In my hunger, I forgot that my body is a gift from God and I must take care of it. I'm sorry, Mom. It's okay. From time to time, we do forget these things. But, you know, it's important that we eat well and drink well so that we take care of ourselves and our bodies. Yeah? And we want to be healthy also and not fall sick so that we can be strong and have the energy to do good for others. Like helping around with the household chores or... Giving others a hug. Thank you for the reminder, Mom. I guess I just got too carried away. I'll save this snack for another time. <laughs> John, wait a minute. Why are you watching? I don't think you should be watching this. But why? It's funny. Um, the actors are using unkind words and bad language. What they say and do do not show any respect for themselves or for others. And they do not give glory to God. Oh yeah, I remember what mom said about the Holy Spirit living in us. Mm. Our body is the gift from God, so we should give thanks to Him by doing and saying things to that glorify Him. That's right. We can ask the Holy Spirit for the gift of right judgment to tell right from wrong so that we can bear the fruit of chastity in our lives. Chastity is being pure and holy in our thought, word and deed. We need to guard what we think, hear, say and do so that our bodies can be an expression of God's love for everyone. So, let's now sing this song to ask Jesus to direct our every move to love Him and others. Na 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 na
I overheard the kids talking about the fruit of chastity earlier on. I'm so proud of them for remembering that we are made with goodness and love. So, how else can we use our bodies to show God's love to others? Modesty is another fruit of the Spirit. Modesty is when we show the purity of our heart in action. We are modest when we dress appropriately. We also show modesty when we are slow to speak instead of being too eager to talk about ourselves or bragging about our talents and what we have achieved. Children, chastity, modesty and generosity may not be in the list of the fruit of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians 5.22, but the Catholic Church teaches us that if we walk in the Spirit, we will grow in these three fruits too. It can be difficult and challenging growing in the Spirit, but let's listen to how we can bear this challenge. The ox is one of the most hard-working land animals in the world. They are strong and trained to carry heavy loads from a young age, but they don't do this alone. They have an older ox to help them. A wooden beam known as a yoke is placed on the oxen's necks and they plough the fields together. The work they do helps the farmers to grow the food that we eat. It is definitely not easy work, but they have each other. Children, just like how the older ox walks with the younger calf, Jesus is walking with us on this journey of growing in the Spirit. He assures us of His love. This is what Jesus means in Matthew chapter 11, verse 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We can always turn to Jesus for strength and he will make our load easier to bear. Let's continue to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit to guide us in our lives and we will know that the Holy Spirit is working in us by the fruit that we bear. Keep working at it. Oh, and don't forget to go to the Padlet link for the activities this week. Now, let's sing this song to help us remember the fruit of the Spirit. Ready? Okay! Love, joy, peace, gracious kindness, goodness, faithfulness to woo-hoo, gentleness and self-control, chastity, modesty, generosity. With God's Spirit, how about you? Get mad when things don't go your way. It's easy to get angry when you're having a bad day. It's easy to be mean when people do you wrong. It's easy to complain when you just can't get along. But there's a better way. The spirit can help. We got the fruit, yeah, yeah. This is how we live. We got the fruit, yeah, yeah. Fruit of the spirit, the gifts that only God can give. But it's easy to be selfish when we need to give away. It's easy to run when you know you need to stay. It's easy to quit instead of staying until the end. It's easy to argue Instead of speaking like a friend But there's a better way The Spirit can help you when you pray We got the fruit, yeah, yeah Fruit of the Spirit We got the fruit, yeah, yeah This is how we do We got the fruit, yeah, yeah Fruit of the Spirit The gifts that only God can give Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness Chastity, modesty, generosity With God's spirit, 
Then how about you? It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at home. Hi, welcome back. Now, let's listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us this week. The Church tells us that only bread made of wheat can become the Eucharist. At Mass, we use what Jesus used at the Last Supper when he said, This is my body. One way of thinking about this bread is that, just as the loaf is made up of many grains of wheat, the Church is made up of many Christians. St. Augustine, a wise bishop who lived 1,600 years ago, said that first the wheat grains must be broken down into flour, just as we break our sinful selves down through prayer and fasting. Then the flour must be wetted with water to be shaped into bread, just as we must be baptized with water to become part of God's church. But dough still isn't bread. It needs fire to turn it into a perfect loaf. In the same way, we need the fire of the Holy Spirit that comes down at confirmation. The Holy Spirit matures us. It perfects our bond with the Church. The story of the grain becoming bread, then, is the story of how each one of us becomes part of God's Church. Thank you, Auntie Estella, for sharing with us about the importance of bread. It is now time to prepare for Holy Mass. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome my brothers and sisters in Christ to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about generosity, chastity and modesty. There's nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, 26 July 2020. We offer up this Mass for the children who are victims of abuse and for all children that they may always seek the Lord in their lives. Join us in singing the processional hymn, Holy Wisdom, Lamp of Learning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear children, dear parents, we gather once again in God's presence. As we come together as family of God, we turn to our Heavenly Father, asking for forgiveness for the many times that we have failed Him, for the times we have not been worthy of the name of Jesus. For these occasions, we turn to our Heavenly Father, 
asking for grace and for strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that, with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of the Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, "Ask what you would like me to give you." Solomon replied, "Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in succession to David, my father. But I am a very young man, unskilled in leadership. Your servant finds himself in the midst of this people of yours, that you have chosen, a people so many its numbers cannot be counted or reckoned." Give your servant a heart to understand how to discern between good and evil. For who could govern this people of yours that is so great? It pleased the Lord that Solomon should have asked for this. Since you have asked for this, the Lord said, and not asked for long life for yourself, or riches. Or the lives of your enemies, but have asked for a discerning judgment for yourself. Here and now, I do what you ask. I give you a heart wise and shrewd as none before you has had, and none will have after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Romans. We know that by turning everything to their good, God cooperates with all those who love Him, with all those that He had called according to His purpose. They are the ones He chose specially long ago and intended to become true images of His Son, so that His Son might be the eldest of many brothers. He called those he intended for this; those he called, he justified, and with those he justified, he shared his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Sing. I- 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone has found. He hides it again, goes off happy, sells everything he owns and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he finds one of great value, he goes and sells everything he owns and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea that brings in a haul of all kinds. When it is full, the fishermen haul it ashore. Then, sitting down, they collect the good ones in a basket and throw away those that are no use. This is how it will be at the end of time. The angels will appear and separate the wicked from the just to throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Have you understood all this? They said, yes. And he said to them, well then, every scribe who becomes a disciple of the kingdom of heaven it's like a householder who brings out from his storeroom things, both new and old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear children, it's very nice to meet you again, especially um, some faces that look familiar. And uh, we are very happy today, those of you back home in, the, in your living rooms, we have got a set of triplets and then another family of two boys and two girls. Now, children, was it a choice for you to come to be on this mass, this online mass? What are the choices that you made in your life? Yeah? You asked your parents or your parents told you you have to go. You wanted to be present, right? You made that decision, okay? Now, let's say I ask you to choose something. Maybe I've got in my hand here, uh, maybe I've got chocolates here or sweets and something, and I ask you to choose, what do you want? You would probably want the hand with the sweets and the chocolates, right? Now, notice this is something very natural for all of us. We want something that will make us happy. We want some things that will bring us joy. And that's what choices have been all this while, especially if we are young people, we choose things that we like. Now, children, today I'm gonna to teach you another word a bigger word, and it's called discerning. D-I-S-C-E-R-N-I-N-G. Okay, discerning. Maybe you can also spell it out with your mummies and daddies back home. Now, this is important. Why? Because today in our first reading, we have this King Solomon from the Book of Kings. And we are told, and we are given this word rather, he asked for a discerning judgment. Now, what does it mean? You see, Solomon was given a choice of options. In fact, we are told that the God appeared to him in a dream and God asked him, what would you like me to give you? Children, when I ask you at the start of this homily, what would you like? You definitely would say you want sweets, you want toys, you want chocolates. But you see what was different with Solomon? Solomon asked for something so special to help him in his work that God has appointed him to do. In other words, what Solomon chose wasn't something for his own benefit, wasn't something which he liked, but he chose and asked God for wisdom to be able to govern, to lead, to rule his people. And what is beautiful about this is that Solomon recognized that firstly he had deficiencies, he wasn't equipped with many things, he said, I'm a very young man. I'm unskilled in leadership. He knew his weaknesses. But because he believed and trusted that God had chosen him for a reason, for a purpose, he asked God for the qualities that needed to, con to continue with God's will. That's what discerning is all about, dear children. We discern and ask God for gifts that will help us to do His will, not our will. And notice the response that God gave. God spoke to Solomon and said, Since you have asked for this and not asked for long life or riches or the lives of your enemies, 
but you have asked for a discerning judgment for yourself, here and now I do what you ask. Children, this is so important because as we go about our daily lives, when we go through school, when we always pray and ask God for, for favours, very often we are asking things only that suits us, things that we want, things that we like. But let us follow the example of Solomon today. He prayed and asked for gifts that can continue God's work in his life. Which leads us to the point of the gospel. And the gospel tells us that the kingdom of God is like a treasure, something so precious, something that everybody was craving for. This man was walking in the field and he stumbled upon this treasure. Then he goes and hides it off. He sells everything he owns to buy that field. What does this mean? What Jesus is really saying, children, is not that the kingdom of God is like this is material thing, like a treasure, like a pearl. What Jesus is saying, the way of life, how we accept the word of God, how we accept the good news of Jesus, is like that treasure, it's like that pearl, where we will make sacrifices. We will go at all cost to do away with things that distract us from the kingdom of God, from the message of Jesus, so that we can own it, so that we can possess it so that we can be completely healed in God's eyes. Okay, children, so this is a way that we pray. Today's gospel helps us to understand, today's readings help us to understand what it requires to be a disciple of Jesus, to be a follower of Jesus, that is to have a discerning heart, a discerning judgment. Can you spell that word with me again, children? I say it again, okay? It's D-I-S-C-E-R-N-I-N-G discerning heart, a discerning judgment, okay? Allow me now to speak to your parents because your parents are also going through a difficult time during this COVID pandemic. And many of us are faced with choices, difficult choices. Many of your parents have also choices made for them. Some of them had to lose their jobs, take pay cuts, and many of them had to make sacrifices, children. But the gospel today gives us hope because in our second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, he says, we know that by turning everything to their good, God cooperates with all those who love him. At the end of the day, children and dear parents, where is or where lies our hearts? Are they with God? Do we trust him and we know that whatever happens in our lives, God has a plan for it. And we are given this promise to the words of St. Paul that God will make everything good for us whose hearts are with him, who love him. In other words, yes, the kingdom of God is like this treasure, like this pearl, but if our hearts are set on being faithful to him, God's plan will ring true in our lives. But provided we are able, number one, to make discerning choices, choices not only for our own wills, for our own desires, our selfish desires, Choices that God's will be done in, the, in our lives, in the lives of our loved ones. So parents and children, today on the 17th Sunday, we are taught how to pray, what to pray for, and what sort of heart we ought to have as we are followers of Jesus. We pray for the faithful heart and a discerning heart like Solomon. Amen. Okay, dear children and parents at home, as we have heard the word of God broken for us to help us to digest, to accept it, let us now stand to profess our faith. As we say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. 
in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear friends, let us ask our Heavenly Father to grant us the gift of discerning judgment so that we may find the pearls of the kingdom of God. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop William, all priests and clergy, that they find strength and wisdom in God, as they carry out the responsibilities entrusted to them to lead his flock. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations of the world, that God may grant them leaders like Solomon, who wish to possess an understanding heart, that they may judge their people rightly and distinguish right from wrong. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth and young adults, that they will do what is good, choose what is right, and be attentive to the calling of the Spirit within their own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are working to defeat the coronavirus, that God will give strength to all healthcare workers, insight to those researching treatments and cures, and patience to all who face daily challenges because of the disease. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers, we pray in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of faithfulness, we know that you are always at work for the good of those who love you. Answer our prayers through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all the children. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which you bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Let Lord. us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it, to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now share with each other the peace of Christ. Peace be with you, children. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In our hearts, we ask Jesus for a discerning judgment to be able to choose right things that will please Him and not for our own selfish desires. We invite 
invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
I remember that everyone was just shocked and like, oh no, like how can, how can it be and everything. The first feeling I had was really one of sadness because uh, to me, being able to attend a mass is something so special, it's so sacred. I mean, I'm a very practical person, so I thought that was a correct move by the church. We don't want the church to be another center of outbreak, you know. There was an emptiness. People were like asking questions. When is this going to end? I would say that there was also a little bit of fear. Fear because of the unknown. I began to ask myself, what's going to happen to them for all these months when there's nothing happening? So I said, no, uh, as a shepherd, you got to go and find the sheep. I've relied heavily on the online sessions, uh, not just online masses, but the online sessions conducted by OIP, the online sessions by our community. Cat class uh, facilitators, right? They went the extra mile to come up with materials every week and they form chat groups to send to parents of different levels. As me and my husband go through with the, the sessions with our children, right? We ourselves also learn. When is the correct time we ring the bell and when they see the readings, we will also meet them. Uh, so at home, we've been uh, with a part-time lectors, we've had part-time author servers, just to you know keep uh, interaction and, and engagement with us. In between also, I also attended like sort of like conferences like there was a theology of the body conference by like jason Everett. like there's just so much um it's a lot of material <laughs> there's, so, there's so many there's so many online resources now it's, yeah. it's incredible we have done a lot of digital retreats and formation of sorts and i really jump onto every one of them because i suddenly realized i need to reach out i need to listen we have to remind all christians that this is the actual call at our baptism the call to still spread the word of God and not let the circumstances around us distract, detract or deter us from bringing out God's message to the world. In whatever way you can, be an ambassador of Christ. As simple as sharing some Facebook post to someone else is already a form of evangelization. In like one month, we were able to touch as many people as we did the whole year and people are still signing up. So I think there is a need to fulfill and if we can do it online, that's where we can still continue to make a difference to the people around us. The vibrancy, the evangelizing spirit, the missionary spirit can be within a person, within a group of people whom we call church, who are still missionary despite the fact that it is not a place that they call a cathedral, a basilica or a church. Now is the time to be creative about passing on the faith and it's actually within the family because it is how the early church moved and grew. In very relevant ways, we need to be able to show with confidence that the Catholic Church has relevant instruments and solutions. The level of creativity that it has actually unleashed in people who never kind of thought about it. And even some priests now, you know, also are thinking about using technology to reach out to their thoughts. I mean, we've been talking about World Communications Day for years, right? I think this is really living out World Communication Day where you really reach out to the world and to the ends of the world. Huh? But at the end of the day, I always believe conversion is the work of the Holy Spirit. However, we must do our part. Change really begins with you. You have to change. You have to make that change in attitude first. Now we have the Lord on our side. What else do we need? Who else do we need? So spend this time with the Lord. Spend this quiet time. Allow the Lord to guide you, to tell you what He would like you to do. And you will find amazing things happening. Humanitarian work of the Church is part and parcel of the Gospel. And so I invite you all to help the vulnerable, the low-income, the migrant community. And also with CARIS, we have 20 organizations 
serving the poor all over the world, especially in Asia. And there are so many requests. Huh? They have received $11 million of requests. Um, it is difficult to explain how, how life is hard and sometimes dangerous for many families. And actually, this is a situation that we can find in many cities in, in Southeast Asia. Many people are struggling. Uh, we didn't have any preventive materials such as masks, uh, gloves, uh, hand gels, soap, the tissues, trash cans. Uh, many migrant workers from the abroad, they came back and they lose their job, they you know, more work. The situation of COVID-19 pandemic has affected many of our students' families. The motor taxi drivers, the tuk-tuk drivers, daily earners, all lost their job. Even the factory workers, they have lost their job because all the factories are closed down. The people in the squatter area uh, don't fear to die of COVID-19. They fear to die of hunger. They have no food, they have no means in order to survive. We have to do whatever we need to bring what they need in order for them to survive. It's so important to ask the help of God for these people, not to uh, fall into despair, but to, to see the light of hope. And we, all of us, we can be the instrument of this hope. So we are counting on you. Thank you very much. The request for support and aid is growing greater by the day. In this humanitarian crisis, your urgent donation can help to save many lives. It's very important to let them feel that they are not forgotten, that there are people who are taking care of them. Uh, it's something that tells them you need to feel that they are not alone, that they are not abandoned. God loves a cheerful giver. When you give, uh, give with a happy heart, a joyful heart. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Amid the COVID-19 global pandemic, may we unite to feed the hungry so that we may be a light in the time of darkness. Let's make hope happen. Donate today. CARIS, Caritas Humanitarian Aid and Relief Initiatives in Singapore. For details on how you can donate and help in other ways, visit makehopehappen.caris-singapore.org.